Today, we're taking a deep dive into my Oscar Aquarium. Let's start off with the maintenance of the aquarium. Well, first things first, we shut off the pump to the filter. Then attach a drain hose we built a while ago and begin draining the tank. This drain hose is one and a half inch in diameter and built to drain about 30% of the water in the tank and it does it really fast. As the tank's draining, I use some of that tank water and fill a bucket halfway. This will be used later. With the tank drained, I can start filling with fresh water from the tap that matches the tank's temperature. I don't need to add any dechlorinator because I'm on a well. While the tank is filling, I clean the sponge and the pre-filter of the filtration. And this is where the bucket of tank water is used. I simply squeeze the sponge in the tank water, cleaning it of all the detritus. This is done in tank water so as not to kill any bacteria living on the sponge. Now I am on a well, so I technically don't need to do this because it's the chlorine in tap water that will typically kill the bacteria. However, I want to use this dirty water in a little while. Now we're only looking to remove the waste, nothing more. Then I place the sponge back in the filter and wait for the tank to finish filling. Now typically I would use this bucket of filthy water to water plants around the house or even to fix some trouble spots on my lawn, believe it or not. But since I do have a tank that isn't cycled, I'm gonna dump it in there. This is filled with bacteria and detritus, enough bacteria to start the cycle on the tank and enough detritus to feed the bacteria until I stock the tank. Now by morning, the tank will be cleared and this filthy water has seeded in the filter as well as everything in the tank. Finally, I'll clean the outside of the tank glass if needed, and generally I will do the inside with an algae magnet prior to the water change if needed, but this tank rarely needs that done. Gravel vacuuming typically isn't required in most of my tanks due to proper amount of flow in the tanks and the fact that nothing really has a chance to settle and it just gets blown into the filter. The filtration is built to do exactly what I need it to do. Now this entire process takes about 20 to 25 minutes and knowing this allows me to schedule out the rest of the 180 gallon tanks with most of this simply being waiting around for the tanks to fill. Now in the summer, I can actually cut this time in half as I will use hoses from the house as well as a water source, but it's too cumbersome in the winter months, you know, opening up all the doors and running water through the snow, you name it. So in the summer, I can change the water in all of the 180 gallon tanks, which is six of them in about an hour. In the winter, that time doubles. A couple hours is all it takes. Now, let's talk about everything else. First of all, let's talk about the tank itself. It's two feet wide, two feet tall, and six feet long, making it a classic 180 gallon aquarium. We have six in this entire racking system. This, however, is the Oscar Aquarium, and it definitely had to be the first tank you see when you walk in here when it comes to the racking system, simply because these guys are just like water puppies, absolutely friendly, filled with personality, and always willing and waiting to greet me, just like little puppies. However, having a pack of Oscars has changed the way I look at them, and I hope to be able to help you do the same. Back to the tank, though. The lids are just do-it-yourself lids that I showed you how to build already. The lights are little plastic planters that I painted. Simple household LED light bulbs. The filtration, we built ourselves as well. As for the decor, lots of rounded rocks. I let them do what they want in this tank. I was going around fixing everything, uh, but I'm allowing them to mound up the gravel wherever they want, which is likely the Fajaca puffer that's doing it, and the Oscars are moving the rocks around. I'm just letting them do it until it's no longer aesthetically pleasing and then I'll fix it. The Fajaca in an Oscar aquarium or any tank with tank mates is simply a, not a common sight. They're typically nasty, but my Fajaca has been raised with tank mates since I've had him. And a lot of the times, if you raise a fish as a baby with other fish, it will always, well, there's a massive chance that it will always get along with other fish, even if it's typically not. Now, if I raised him alone, he definitely wouldn't be able to get along with many fish. 
especially in the nighttime because the fajaca tends to be an evening predator where it will go after food at night. Now the Oscars, as a pack, we have six. These guys are about eight inches now and they got another four inches to go. It looks like uh, they're pretty small in person, but the tank is, or I'm sorry, they look pretty small on camera, but the fact of the matter is they're all quite large when we put our hand up to it. I suspect by spring, these guys will be pushing a foot long at least. And we'll see how they look in this tank by that time. But right now they're all getting along absolutely phenomenally. And there's, there's no doubt about that. None of them have torn fins or banged up much. You will notice the odd one, like this guy right here. See the top of him? That's not from uh, another fish. A couple of them have banged their heads. When they jump, they hit the brace here because they're aggressive feeders and they will jump. I tend not to mess around with the top of the tank because well, as you can see, they're gonna jump. And when they jump, they simply jump up and hit the brace and bang their heads. Bunch of clumsy little kids that are driven by their stomachs. Now, when you have an Oscar by itself, they tend to be a little more personable or so I thought. They'll change color with their mood. They'll tend to spend a lot of time laying down when they're upset or anything like that. These guys simply do not do that. When they get upset or when they're nervous, these guys pack together like a shoal of very tight pack fit and they all move together. It's absolutely amazing to see it happen. It doesn't happen very often because I don't really mess with these guys and they're always relatively happy. But when it does happen, it is one of the most adorable things I've ever seen. And I don't think I'd ever keep an Oscar by itself again now that I've seen what they're like with their own kind. It's like they move together, almost like a shoaling tetra. It's just beautiful, absolutely fascinating. And I'm gonna keep saying that until everybody's annoyed with me saying absolutely phenomenal, absolutely amazing. It is, it just simply is. And I couldn't be more pleased with this aquarium. Now, how do I keep this tank so clean with one of the messiest fish on the planet? Well, the fact of the matter is, is I don't do anything different than you guys. You've seen my tank maintenance. I change the water, I fill it back up, I clean a sponge, no big deal. A lot of people are always concerned with how much work this place is, but it's all designed to be relatively easy while using different methods of filtration and fish keeping in different aquariums just to expose you to a lot, which I'll admit makes it things a little more cumbersome because I have to change tactics for each aquarium, but you'll see these uh, types of things in the near future. This is gonna come down to diet. I don't feed these guys pellets exclusively because when I feed them pellets or floating food sticks, which I typically give them, you know what they do. They'll swallow some, they chew the rest up and it comes out of their gills and it's the single most annoying thing that I ever encountered. Instead, a lot of the times I go, uh, I'll feed fresh foods one day, pellets the next. Fresh food one day, pellets the next. So I'm feeding half the amount of pellets that you're feeding. And when I feed fresh foods, and what I mean by that is stuff like shrimp, just market shrimp you get at your local grocery store, this is not a messy food. However, it's packed full of calories and a lot of the things and nutrients that your fish will require. The biggest thing is because these guys are like a tiger Oscar and they have a lot of red, what makes the shrimp pink and red? is going to turn them. Just like a flamingo, they are not pink naturally and they are pink and red because of the shrimp they're eating. The carotenoids that are in the shrimp are turning the flamingo pink. The carotenoids that are in a shrimp are going to turn my Oscars red and they're gonna display that orange and red a little more readily. Now, I don't give them a lot of food either. You've seen these guys, nice, healthy, and fat. A lot of the times people overfeed their Oscars because they beg and they beg and they beg and it's so fun to feed them because they're so aggressive, such an aggressive eater. They don't need that food. It's just going to waste. It's just polluting the tank. And it's just going to make them fat and unhealthy and shorten their lifespan. So they get one shrimp per day if I'm feeding shrimp that day. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's quite a bit of food in comparison. It's like me eating a whole pizza. I could definitely eat a whole pizza. Anyways, I've got six Oscars and a Fajaca puffer. I got to make sure he eats because the Oscars are so aggressive, yet the Fajaca isn't. So Ooh, I hate this. If I drop in shrimp, I got to drop them in one at a time. I let them get a mouthful each and it's just fun. But sometimes the odd Oscar is a little pig and they will eat more than their share. They will try to jam in more than one piece. We're lucky this time. Each one got one piece. Now I'm left with two. I drop that in. 
we're going to let the Fajaka eat. Unless Gutsy over here comes over and gets it. But right now, that's not what happened. My tactic worked. Feed each of the Oscars individually so the Fajaka can eat as well. Now, one of the benefits to having the Fajaka in with the Oscars is that they have almost identical diet requirements. However, the Fajaka is just not a really aggressive feeder. It would be in a tank of its own, but it can't compete with these gluttons. Nobody can compete with these guys. If I was in a tank of Oscars, I would starve to death. They'd just outcompete, and that tends to be the, the case with a lot of fish. So I tactically feed them. With that said, the Fajaka will eat uh, pellets as well, but not when I feed the Oscars, because he won't eat uh, floating pellets. So the Fajaka eats every two days which is more than enough for a sedentary fish like this that spends a lot of its time just laying on the ground. And you can see how fat and uh, rounded he is in his midsection, I think, personally. He's just trying to be like me. Now, in the past, I've done... <laughs> it's so funny when they've got a, a mouthful, a throat full of food. In the past, I've done how to take care of Oscars, so if you... and all about them. So if you want to learn a lot more about the Oscar fish, I highly suggest you watch that video. With that said, I haven't been doing a ton of updates on my aquariums, and I plan to try to get all of them done this month. So if you like this format of video and you like these types of updates, let me know in the comments section below. But I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. What if things don't work out here? What if a pair forms uh, and uh, they start fighting with the other Oscars or trying to kill them? What would I do then? Well, we clearly have other big aquariums. I've also thought maybe the Oscars move into the 2000 at one point. Uh, perhaps, which I think would be awesome with the Severums and the Walru uh, and the Angels and the Festivums, really all uh, uh, an, an Amazonian type aquarium. But of course, we have all the Tetras in there and we'd have to remove those. So I'm going to think about that for a few months. Maybe in the new year, we, we reconsider if we want to keep them in here for life or if we just dwindle the numbers or we let a, pour, a pair form and we just let them have this tank and let them breed and do their own thing. But Oscars are such an amazing fish, side story. And let's not make this weird. Don't make fun of me, don't get mad at me, don't judge me. I'm sharing my private stories of the history of my aquarium hobby. And at one point it began, oh, I threw up a little bit. I, it began at Walmart. <laughs> that was the only place I could get fish at one point. And the biggest aquarium they sold, if you guys remember, were 55 gallon kits. I would build the stands and put the tank on them. Then anyways, I came across the world of Oscars, and at one point I kept them exclusively. I had six 55 gallon aquariums. Mind you, this was like 17 years ago or something like that, 16, 17. And every aquarium had one Oscar in it. And Walmart was my local fish store for the longest time where I go to meet fellow aquarists. And to be honest with you, a lot of times if I have to go to Walmart, I would just kind of stroll around the, the, the fish section just in case I bumped into somebody that also kept fish so I could talk about it because I knew nobody that kept fish. Man, it was so weird how things evolve. What a... Anyways, at times people were like, oh, you keep it. You know how conversations with fish, fish keepers start. Um, and nobody believed me that uh, I had six 55 gallon tanks with an Oscar in each one. Nobody believed me then, and you have no reason to believe me now because I don't have proof of it. But it happened, and I kept Oscars exclusively in my hobby at one point. I only had Oscars for like two years. Uh, and I moved provinces, which is like in the United States when you move states, uh, and only took one tank, or one fish, my favorite Oscar out of the bunch. Couldn't take all of them and move that far with little babies and stuff, but... Um, and uh, I upgraded him to a 75 gallon. Uh, anyways, hope you, didn't, hope you like the video and I hope you like Oscars. I hope I showed you them in a good light uh, and how to keep them responsibly, I guess. And, you know, uh, yeah, they could be such a rewarding fish. And for something that costs five bucks, I think that at, at some point they've been devalued in the hobby. And I think that people are just not showcasing and appreciating uh, them as much. Uh, and I'll admit that keeping them in a shoal has certainly reignited my passion for them. Let's just hope that I don't go back to the point where <laughs> imagine if every aquarium just had one Oscar. You guys would kill me. See you guys in the next video.